Rio San Marcos Ghost Town is a gang in San Marcos, California. They are located around Sunset Park. They are the largest gang in San Marcos. VSM Ghost Town Case Files The crimes in this case occurred in San Marcos, where two rival gangs operate, Barrio San Marcos, VSM, also known as Ghost Town, and South Los. Defendant is a member of the VSM gang. At about midnight on February 18, 2008, James Novit was robbed while walking home from work. The robbers jumped out of an older model white car, pointed a gun at him, and took his cell phone and wallet. As the robbers went back to the car, they said, You just got jacked by Ghost Town. Two hours after Novit was robbed, Yulita Santiago and Mario Rodriguez were the victims of a carjacking and robbery, the carjacking, robbery incident. At about 2 a.m., Santiago and Rodriguez were in Santiago's Ford Taurus in the parking lot of an apartment complex. The perpetrators got out of an older model white or cream-colored car and pointed a gun at Santiago. One one of them threw a bicycle in front of Santiago's car, stating that's what you are going to use because we're going to take your car. After Santiago and Rodriguez got out of the car, one of the robbers placed a sharp object at Rodriguez's neck and took his wallet. Two of the perpetrators drove away in Santiago's car, and two others left in the white car. After the perpetrators left, Santiago and Rodriguez called the police. The victims of the two incidents were unable to identify the perpetrators. Two, however, as we shall detail below, the perpetrators were identified to the police by a 15-year-old male, Juan L., who was with them during the crimes. Juan told the police that the offenses were committed by defendant and two other individuals, Abraham Ibarra and George Lopez. At trial, Juan recanted his statements identifying defendant, claiming that only Ibarra and Lopez were with him during the offenses. The jury was presented with Juan's recorded statements to the police identifying defendant as one of the perpetrators. At trial, the defense theory was that Juan's statements identifying defendant were not credible. And although the offenses may have been committed by a group of gang members, defendant was not with the group at the time of the offenses and was not a perpetrator. Juan was apprehended after the driver of Santiago's stolen Ford Taurus engaged the police in a vehicular pursuit. On the night they received the carjacking report, the police spotted Santiago's Ford Taurus with four people inside. The Ford Taurus sped away followed by police units, until the Ford got stuck in a muddy field and the occupants fled on foot. The police caught one of the occupants, Juan. Novit's cell phone was in Juan's pocket. Inside the stolen Ford Taurus, the police found a cell phone belonging to defendant's girlfriend with photos of defendant stored inside the phone. In a recorded interview on February 18, 2008, Juan initially told the police the carjacking was committed by several of his friends, including a man named Jose Hernandez. Later, during this same interview, Juan stated this friend's name was actually Marcos Hernandez. On February 21, defendant was arrested after the police found him sleeping in a van in front of an apartment where the police were executing a search warrant in an unrelated case. After defendant's arrest, Juan was again arrested and questioned by the police on February 26. In this second recorded interview, after being told that everybody had been arrested and interviewed about the prior week's incidents, Juan told the police that Marcos Hernandez was, in fact, defendant, that is, Marco Benitez. During the two recorded interviews, Juan described defendant's participation in the Novit robbery and the carjacking, robbery incident. Juan stated that he, defendant, Ibarra, and Lopez were in the Cadillac belonging to defendant's girlfriend. Defendant was driving. According to Juan, they were looking for gangbangers. To this effect, Ibarra stated, let's go look for SOPs, that is, South Los gang members. They were also looking for gas money, and they said, whoever we see, we're gonna jack him. When they saw Novit walking, they said let's jack this fool. Defendant, Ibarra, and Lopez got out of the car. 
defendant pointed a fake gun at Novet, Ibarra searched Novet's pockets, and Lopez pushed Novet. After robbing Novet, they went to a convenience store, where defendant bought chips and soup. At trial, the convenience store clerk identified defendant as a man who on February 18 came into the store at about 1 a.m., purchased beer, chips, and soup, and then left in a gold cattle act.3 With respect to the carjacking, robbery incident, Juan told the police that when they saw Santiago and Rodriguez in the Ford Taurus, his friends decided to get him. Defendant told Juan to get in the driver's seat of the Cadillac, and Juan complied. Defendant and the others got out of the Cadillac. Defendant put the toy gun to Santiago's head. Ibarra dropped the bicycle in front of the Ford Taurus and put a screwdriver in Rodriguez's face. Defendant and Ibarra drove away in the Ford Taurus, and Juan and Lopez left in the Cadillac. Juan and Lopez dropped the Cadillac off at defendant's girlfriend's home and then joined the others in the stolen Ford Taurus. Juan told the police that he and Ibarra were not VSM gang members, that defendant was, and that Lopez had not yet been jumped into the gang but the gang was testing him. Detectives Ricardo Lopez and David Collins testified on behalf of the prosecution as gang experts. VSM claims San Marcos as its territory, and it has a history of committing such offenses as murder, assault with a deadly weapon, carjacking, robbery, burglary, battery, and graffiti. Defendant has been documented as a VSM member based on law enforcement criteria, whereas Ibarra, Lopez, and Juan have not. However, all the males have been associated with the gang. In July 2007 Ibarra was shot at by a South Los gang member, and during this incident the assailant called Ibarra a VSM member. In September 2007 the police made contact with Ibarra when he was associating with documented VSM members. Lopez was arrested along with a documented VSM gang member for a vehicular and residential burglary, and his moniker G-Boy has been observed on graffiti. The current case was the first police contact with Juan, Juan admittedly grew up with VSM members and the police consider him a VSM associate. The gang experts explain that associates who hang out with gang members and want to join the gang must prove their worth by committing crimes. This includes the process of being tested to see if the associate is worth being part of the gang. The associate will typically start with graffiti, and then progress to violent crimes. To be accepted into the gang, the associate must be willing to do the things he is told to do for the gang. An associate who willingly follows the orders of a gang leader, especially to commit a violent crime, will easily be accepted into the gang. Detective Collins opined the Novit robbery was committed for the benefit of the gang or in association with the gang. To support this, Collins cited Juan's statements that they were looking for gangbangers and sops, the fact that the street they were driving on was an area associated with the South Los Gang, the theft of the cell phone which can be passed around through the gang or sold, and the statement to the victim that he had just been jacked by Ghost Town which would instill fear in the community. Collins provided the same opinion for the carjacking, robbery of Santiago and Rodriguez, stating that it was committed about two hours after the first crime when they went looking for gangbangers, the property they gained from the first crime was minimal compared to what they usually acquire, and they took a car which is a lot bigger prize to them and something the gang can use. Detective Collins explained that gang members use stolen cars to commit other crimes so they are not easily identified by the police. Collins stated that in this case when the police spotted them, they took off in the car and then fled when they crashed, and if no one had been caught, the police would have acquired only a stolen car. Further, Collins opined that because defendant was the only documented gang member, the other perpetrators, who were gang associates, would have looked to him for direction. The carjacking permitted the perpetrators, particularly if they were being tested, to show what they acquired for the gang and, when other gang members asked to use the car, they could let them use their G-Ride. Collins stated that the fact the perpetrators did not yell out their gang name during the offense did not alter his opinion. He testified that sometimes during crimes gang members yell out their gang affiliation and sometimes they do not. 
He stated the public in San Marcos knows about the gangs, the gang members did not need to yell out their gang name for the victims to know they just got their car carjacked by gang members, and the crime was done to intimidate the community.